Welcome to the Epic Flight Academy. This is the Private Pilot Ground School, and my name is Mike Thompson. Now, if you're a flight instructor watching these videos, or if you just happen to be a teacher or an instructor of any kind, I'd like to make you aware of Telling is Not Teaching, Flight Instructor's Manual. This is one of my many accomplishments over a 43-year career as a flight instructor, and I wrote this book to parallel the FAA's handbook for the aviation instructor. This handbook parallels that handbook and expands upon each of those chapters and gives instructors a little more background and understanding on the teaching and learning process. Now, remember to be successful in this course, there's three things we need to accomplish. One, you're watching these videos. Number two, you must be using Epic's online course. And number three, then you're going to want to review this content with your flight instructor. So let's get started. What's our topic today? <clears throat> today, our lesson is beginning a series on aircraft systems. When we talk about aircraft and aircraft systems, we break the aircraft down broadly into five categories. You can see those here. Five major parts. The fuselage, the wing, the power plant, empennage, and landing gear. <clears throat> so let's take a look at some of those. Let's start with the wing. The wing on any aircraft has a couple of key structures. One of those key structures is the spar. You can see in this diagram, this aircraft wing has a front spar and a rear spar. Some aircraft have only one spar. Some older aircraft have spars made of wood. This is an example of a metal wing with two spars. Now, joining those two spars are what we call ribs, and you can see these ribs are in the shape or camber of the airfoil. <clears throat> Stretched over the ribs and the spars are the aircraft skin. Typically, for the 172, this is an aluminum outer skin riveted to these ribs and spars. <clears throat> These ribs, if you take a close look at them, you can see that they've got holes in the ribs, and you're wondering why that might be. The first thing that occurs to us is, well, there's less weight. Well, in fact, that's true. Um, th they are lighter by removing that material, but that's not the main reason. The second thing that occurs to us is, hey, look, with the holes through these ribs, we can run control cables and electrical wiring and other items throughout the length of the wing from the root to the tip. And that's a key factor. But thirdly, and most importantly, taking those circular cutouts from that rib actually makes the rib stronger, not weaker. And it makes it stronger because it helps to distribute stress. Now, most aircraft store fuel in their wings. <clears throat> There's three primary ways to do this. One way is to use some high-tech caulking and seal the interior of the wing and fill it with fuel. Now, this is not the kind of caulking that we get at Lowe's or Home Depot. This is pretty high-tech stuff. The second way is to put a rubber bladder down inside this wing between the ribs and fill that bladder full of fuel. And then the third way is a metal tank. On your 172, that's the technique we use. There's actually a metal tank inside your wing and the tank is full of fuel. <clears throat> so, we've looked at the wing. 
The second major part we want to examine is the empennage. Now that's a French word, and it's referring to the entire tail of the aircraft. And you can see that here, it's going to include the vertical and horizontal stabilizers and the primary flight controls that are attached to the horizontal and vertical stabilizer. <clears throat> so looking at the wing and the empennage together, let's look back at this aircraft. Do you see our three primary flight controls? Our first primary flight control, the aileron that we use to roll the aircraft, is built into the wing. The second primary flight control, the elevator that we use for pitching the aircraft, is built into the horizontal stabilizer. And the third primary flight control that we use to control yaw of the aircraft is the rudder, and it's built into the vertical stabilizer. So we've looked at the five major parts, and in particular, we've examined the wing, and we've just taken a look at the empennage. Now, let's have a, ta let's have a look at the landing gear. <clears throat> the landing gear on your aircraft includes both brakes and struts. The aircraft that we're flying has three gear. Notice we didn't say three landing gear. Take a close look at the nose wheel of this airplane. You see the oleo strut there, that helps to absorb shock. And the nose wheel of the airplane really provides two main purposes. It balances the aircraft on the ground <clears throat> so that, you know, we're not falling forward on the propeller, digging the propeller into the tarmac. That wouldn't be good for anybody, especially not the airplane. So it balances the airplane on the ground, and its second main function is it allows us to steer the airplane on the ground. Now, again, look carefully at that nose gear. It is not built, designed, or stressed to land on. That's why I said we had three gear. Actually, we have only two landing gear. Take a look at the main landing gear. Now, these main landing gear are made of structural tubular steel. This is a landing gear design that is designed to take the stress of the aircraft transitioning from flight to ground. On the landing gear, we're going to find brakes. If you look at this diagram, you can see the disc brakes. This is the type of braking system that you've got on the 172. So here's our review question for today. My 172 has three gear. How many of those gear are actually for landing? <laughs>